Hello there, I'm here today to talk about some improvements I did to the Clyde Dialog plugin. If you haven't heard about Clyde before, which there's a big chance you haven't, uh, Clyde is a language I created some time ago, like around three years ago, and uh, it's supposed to be a simple way to write dialogues for your games, and uh, it comes with some tooling. So my, my goal for this one was to create something simple that didn't require any external database or external graphic tool. It's supposed to be easy to write and uh, all this stuff. I have a couple of videos talking about Clyde, and in here I'll mostly show you uh, what are the improvements I did to the plugin. Okay, so the main thing I want to show you is the editor implemented. Now you can edit the dialogues from Godot. This is just an extra editor I created from scratch, so everything you see here I had to, to develop manually. So this one has um, syntax highlighting, it has auto-completion, uh, I can even navigate the code. If I break something for some reason, uh, let me put some special calculus here. Uh, you have the error logs and now you can just click them down and, uh, and see things working. So this is uh, it's pretty cool. But I think the coolest thing is actually the player that I brought to Godot. So um, this is similar to what we have in the online playground. So I just brought it here. And as you can see, you click and you get where in the dialogue you are. In fact, you can click with any of those bubbles and it shows you um, the position in the file. So for this one, maybe it's not that interesting, but if you have like a really long file like this one, it kind of uh, goes and you have options actually to disable that. You can disable the syncing if you don't like that. Um, so yeah, um, another thing, I, I brought all the options you have in the online playground, like this one that if I click this one, it executes dialogue to the next option. So I can just make it easier for me to debug my dialogues. Uh, there's also the Poltergeist uh, option that uh, is the one that does the same thing, but it just, it works like a monkey test where it just picks like options at random and yeah, and then it just like gives you uh, whatever you can go back to the lines like that calls your attention and you can edit stuff. This one is like uh, the multiple uh, bubble option, but you can also have single bubble. So in here you click and you see just the latest one. If you click again, it shows um, all of them. You can also enable metadata. I think in this file, nothing has uh, metadata like uh, tags and IDs, but uh, you can enable here. And it also comes with a uh, debug panel where you can see all the variables from your dialogue and you can actually uh, add new ones if you want to, like you can select different types. Um, you can also just edit the ones that are there or delete them. <laughs> I did by mistake, but I guess if I restart this one, you're going to set a new variable. Yeah, it's pretty good for debugging. Uh, I wish I have done this one when I was developing Firestar, but for Firestar, I was using Godot 3, so I implemented this one just for Godot 4. Godot 3, I did do a bunch of improvements in the Godot 3 version, but Godot 4 is where you have the editor, where you have everything in place, and you can just uh, debug stuff like that. Oh, so besides the, the editor and the player, uh, the other thing I added to Clyde was uh, some helpers and some extra examples. So in the previous version, there was this, this example that uh, actually improved it a little bit. Uh, I improved the interface, but it's just a basic usage example. Like, as you can see, you have options you can choose from. You click and you get the next content. Uh, you have the speaker, you have the information. And, and I just, yeah, I just improved this one to, to be a little bit nicer. But if you open the script, that's basically how you can use Clyde in your game. So you create, you create the object, you load whatever is the script file you want to load, and uh, you can also connect to um, different events and listen to them. And this also shows what you can do with the content because you have different types of con content. This one is returned when you end the dialogue. This one is just a simple line. And then the other one would be the options. So you can set up the list of options. But this is very simple. This here is all you need to use Clyde. Clyde is supposed to be this simple. It's just a dialogue engine. You, you say what's the dialogue, you can set variables, you can listen to events, but that's it. There'll be no RPC calls, it won't know anything about your game. You can, you can actually see, uh, if you go to, to the editor, you can also open the online documentation and everything you need to know is in one file, basically, like how to use that. Uh, and also, if you want to know about the language, there's also one with me for the language that it's all the features in the language, including how to set a speaker, how to set a line ID, how to uh, add tags, and a lot of other stuff. Okay, but coming back here, uh, what I was trying to say is that this is supposed to be simple, and that's by design, but the simplicity does add some friction for new people new to uh, game development or new to Godot, because it does take some time to learn the interface and how to structure the interface. So what I did was creating a couple of helpers to, to help you kickstart if you want to, to give Clyde a try. So uh, the helpers, they come disabled by default. So you need to go to the project settings, go to dialogue, and enable helpers. So when you enable these, there are two things that will be available for your game. I'll just create a new one here. So uh, I create things from scratch. So um, this is my new example. I'll call this one, yeah, no example, right? And I'll create a script for this one. I'll also, will create a, a canvas layer. So this one will be my HUD because usually you want your dialogue bubbles to be above everything else in your game. So 
Um, yeah, just ahead. First thing you want to do is adding a, a client dialog config. This node here, uh, as you can see here in the inspector, you can set a dialog bubble, like a seem to be your dialog bubble. You can set a container for where this uh, dialog bubble uh, should be uh, added to you. And, uh, and then you can also set the input. So this is very opinionated because the idea is it should be a simple kickstart. And if there is something that you want to change, you should be free to extend this or just copy the scenes to your own game. And uh, this actually, you don't even need to change this. If you don't set a dialog bubble, uh, there is a default one that's gonna be used. And if you don't set the container, the parent of the, this node is gonna be used. In this case, the HUD, that's the new canvas layer, so you don't need to do anything. The other helper is a single tone, an auto load. So that's called dialog. So if I do dialog, start dialog, and then uh, here I should set actually a scene to this one. So let me see if I have any, uh, where is it, where is it? Uh, have my simple dialogues here. So I want to load um, simple lines. So can I do this? Yes, perfect. Yeah, so this is the bare minimum. I guess if I run the game here, you see it already started. And if I press, um, I just pressed space, that's the UI except I configured here somewhere. So you see it's animated. There's also this, uh, you saw how I just cut the animation. So if you press space midway, it cuts the animation. So I implemented this, so you can just look into this example and see how it works and you can just copy. So um, another thing you might want to do is to actually extend this resource. So I'm just gonna click here and do extend script. And I'll do this. And here, the dialog config, if I open this file here, uh, it's all documented, you can read each one of those. But the things you would want to, to extend is those two. I should maybe create a template for this one, but those are the two things you want to extend because that's how you persist your game data. The, the example I use doesn't really have anything uh, complex, but you might have branching dialogues, you might have internal variables, and you need to persist those between uh, runs. So this one is gonna be called every time a dialogue starts, and this one is gonna be called every time a dialogue ends to persist the data. If you do this, you have the bare minimum running. Uh, so now let me show you the examples that comes with uh, the plugin. Uh, I have one for the fixed with helpers. So this is the example with a fixed dialog box or dialog bubble. So in here, you see I have my the same configuration. I don't have anything set differently, but if I open here, there's this script. The only thing I did here, I create this persistence object that I just saved the thing, but well, you would have your own storage for that. And another thing, if I open the main script, um, these you see, I, I do have many comments here that you can read and those give you a, an explanation and also ideas on where you can use each one of the events. So if I run this thing here, I added this selection here, this thing, you can choose what a dialogue file you want to use. And when I press here, it just starts the same bubble you saw before. It's just that this one is an example where um, I am also hooking to all the different events, the different signals that come from the helper. Um, as you can see here in the output, those are the things I hooked here. I also have an example using a floating bubble. So if I run this one, this one I didn't implement any selection, but it's the same principle. As you can see, the bubble goes to uh, the ghost that's talking, you see. Um, it's just, it's a really simple interface. It didn't do anything major in here, but this is already a foundation if you want to change those yourself. Like, for example, if you want to, to let's say, to change the color of this one, you can just uh, come to uh, to helpers. You can just come to helpers here, and here there are bubbles. You can just copy those ones. So you copy those ones for your game, and you just uh, edit them. Like you just uh, you come here, and uh, let's say I want this panel to have a different color. You just come here, and you change that, and that's it. And then you, what you would have to do is in your uh, config file, you can just you can just come here and say, oh yeah, I want a different scene to be my bubble. You can either use the same script or just make sure that the dialog bubble has all the methods that are being exposed by this script. So this, this script specifically has some extra nice things that I didn't really showcase. Actually, I should have, if I set my text like this, it kind of moves. Oh, this one shakes and this go, one goes in a wave. So um, let me open a file and just show you this in action. I think, I think this is the one being used there. So let, I think simple lines is one of those. So if I come here and I add like this, and this, this is not part of the language. This is something that I implemented in my interface. So now if I come back to my example here, this one fixed with helpers, just execute this one and I'll pick simple files. So, well, it got the, the, the color I find. Uh, and also you see how it's moving because this is using BB code. So if you want to do anything like this, you can look into Godot's documentation. They have like this BB code uh, documentation thing. So yeah, so now you have options. You can just go with the simple example, like 
and do the interface from scratch or you can use the helpers and use the singleton that expose some quality of life signals and uh, and just dig into examples and into helpers and you see uh, lots of uh, cool stuff that you can apply to your own interface so um, one of the principles when I created Clyde is that I wanted it to be really easy to write like this is how I used to write my dialogues I would go to a, to a file and I would just say oh player said something and then the NPC said another thing so I didn't want to spend energy thinking about interfaces, thinking about formatting, thinking about anything else. Uh, obviously, when you get to branching stuff, you do need a little bit more of structure. But even that, like you can just add options like this, right? Yes or no. So this, I just added display, so it printed again. So if I execute this one, yes or no. If I click yes, it's going to say yes, and that's it. Right, but I say, mm, this one doesn't have a context. So let me say, uh, do you like this? Uh, and then I just... Give an indentation here. So now if I executed this one again, oh yeah, I need to reset because that was a single option. Do you like this? Now I have a context. Okay, but who is saying that? Well, maybe it's the NPC that's saying that. Um, yep, all right. So NPC is saying, do you like this? Yes or no. But here, why I'm saying, showing you this? Well, this is a special character. If I start the line of this, it's gonna try to treat it as an option, right? Because you're starting a line, even here it's saying, those are the tokens you can use after that. Uh, it's an option. Well, but if you want to start a line of that, you can just put your line in quotes. So now I can just do something like this, right? I'll remove the top one here. So now, as you can see, this is there. It's not an option. It's just part of the line. I could also escape this, right? I could also just say here. I just use like a, it's a common language. So you just have like the escape and that's it. It's escaped. However, the most I could, I tried to make this kind of thing not required. When you were starting a line, that, that might be an option. But what if you are in the middle of a line? I mean, it's common, people do use asterisks. So in this case, you don't need to escape, you know, because the language knows that if it's in the middle of a line, that's not a special character. And the same applies for the quotes we just used, right? So I could say, oh, this is a line. This is between quotes and quotes, are in some way special characters because I was using to escape other things. But in this situation, uh, the language knows that, well, you didn't start the line of this quote. So that's not really a special character. And then if I execute the dialogue, you see, yeah, that's true. It's there, it's not a special character. And I did this for everything. Like uh, we were talking about diverts. Well, there's no divert in the middle of a line, right? So there's nothing here. It's just like a regular contest. But now if I am here, like divert to, divert to this block, or even like if I have this option and divert to this block. So uh, it does know that in here, this is a divert and here it's not. All right, so hopefully this gave you some uh, insight on why the language is the way it is. And um, so if you want to give it a try, you can get it from uh, Godot's uh, asset library. Just look for Clyde. Yeah, it should be there. Oh, this is still the old icon. Uh, this is another call out. My wife actually uh, made a really nice new icon for me. I do, I do like it. That, that's cute. So if you have any questions, feel free to add to this um, video's comment. Also, you can go to the repository and uh, open issues and ask questions there as well. Uh, this is actually how I improved this plugin. Like I created the plugin for my own needs and then some other people gave ideas like what if there was a feature for these and that. And I do want to keep it as simple as possible, but when a feature is valid, when uh, it does improve the language, I'm more than happy to bring it to, um, to bring it to the plugin. Yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching. I, I hope that was not too boring for you. See you around, I guess. Bye.